So we all have reasons that we started writing poetry, right? Like, I think everybody does. Um, obviously, a major reason I started writing it was to tell people to go fuck themselves. Um, <laughs> but there's other reasons as well. So this is actually, it's a weird thing to say, because it's a fairly recent poem, but I would say it's probably the first poem I ever wrote, if this makes sense. You'll see why. There's a trick in being a writer. And most times it's just trying to figure out how to properly phrase your childhood. Me as a writer, I've decided I'm a sucker for sepia tone. And when I pull back and remember, I've decided I'm gonna write it like we were the titans of Michigan Avenue. Street ball kings from 2.30 till five when mothers would swoosh granite hands and wave us in frail and battle-worn, but now, nah, it's the fourth down the bumper of Mr. Sinclair's Volkswagen to go. Okay, lump, you bust out the right tackle and dish it to Greeny. Velcro, you go deep. Just watch out for lump, and everything will be okay. Okay? Break. See, my schoolyard tag was always Velcro. Sure, I was short and fat and slow, but I never dropped the ball. On first down, I went on the ghetto of all sports plays. I went deep. <laughs> On second down, you went to the speed of Jay. Third down, the nimbleness of Greeny. But fourth down was my domain, my neighborhood. My hands were so magical that I was never picked last. But for a short, fat kid with glasses, was an earth-shaking accomplishment. <laughs> I could always handle the ball, no problem. I always wanted to be a writer. So I would take meticulous details of every play that we did. I'd go home and take statistics all the way down, because I always understood the power of writing. That history is always going to be kind to you if you're the guy that wrote it down. I could always handle that part. Now Bundy was five foot five, 150 pounds in the fifth grade. He was a completely different issue altogether. That kid was like built like a refrigerator with a head. He was always lumbering off in the background, waiting to turn two-hand touch into two-hand ass-kicking. But the kid was slow. And if you played chicken with his newly pubescent ass as long enough to smell the newly acrid odor coasting off his newly hairy pitch, you could always plant the balls of your feet and Gale saves your way to pain. I could control that. See, the trick when you're writing is figuring out how to phrase things so you look at your best possible light. That's not always possible. Growing up a teenager in Phoenix, Arizona has one distinct truth. Desert kids have tons of time to burn and tons of basements to do it. When we were 16, Bundy got his heart perforated by a switchblade wielded by another short fat victim not as willing as I to stand still and take a beat down. And Bingham had a seizure into his pillow, giving his parents one more pristine, perfect night of sleep. And Greeny drew in gray smoke slow and deep and exhaled gray with pink highlights. I'll tell you a secret. I've never seen a diagram or an illustrating movie illustration of a heart exploding, but when it happens in front of you, you know. When the chest caves in, and the eyelids flutter, and the arm falls forward, you know it's time only for cops and coroners. And I'm sorry, bro, but I gotta run. I promised that I'd do a Hail Mary as I left the doorstep of his parents now childless house, but I never did. Couldn't see the fucking point. It took me years to be able to talk to parents again. I hated seeing the slumped shoulders that used to hold all their fading dreams in the wilted chrysalis shape of a boy. I hated having to ask, so Mrs. Greenberg, how you been? Really meaning so, how you been since your son died? See, the trick as a writer is figuring out how to frame your childhood. And me, I've decided that when I pull back and write this shit down, I'm not gonna write statistics about the dangers of being an urban youth in low-income housing. I'm not gonna write about being headstones that are only good for the birthing of poppies once a year. Instead, I can control this. So it's always fourth down and long to go. Okay, lump, you bust out the rag tackle and dish it to Greeny. Velcro, you keep doing what you do and keep going deep. I can control this so we are young, we are magical, we are still going to make it to the promised land. You with me? Okay.